Today we're taking a look at something a little different. Uh, this is not like anything we've reviewed on this channel before. This is the DryWise, and it's an inline filament dryer. So what is an inline filament dryer? Normally we have hygroscopic materials such as uh, nylon, let's say, uh, that absorb moisture out of the air, and we need to dry them before we can print with them. Uh, we would use a typical kind of dehydrator style filament dryer. And you need to do it for 10, 12, 20 hours. It varies depending on the material, the size of the spool, etc. cetera. Uh, but you essentially dry the entire spool over a period of time. The moment you take it out of there and go to start printing with it, it immediately begins absorbing moisture, obviously at different rates depending on the material. And there are different ways to kind of deal with that issue. There are other smaller enclosures with desiccant uh, sacks in the bottom to try to keep them out of the moist ambient air and in a dry environment while they spool off into your printer. But this accomplishes the same end result in a very different way. Instead of drying the entire spool at once and then trying to keep it dry, you dry the spool as you feed it into the printer itself, hence inline filament dryer. So with all that said, now we know what it is, uh, we know why we might want to use it, and nylon is but only one example of hygroscopic materials. Um, especially as you get into some engineering materials, not only are they hygroscopic, but they require much higher temperatures to kind of remove the moisture from the filament. Uh, and that has its own host of problems, including melting a plastic spool, uh, so you have to have them on a metal spool if you get into some really exotic materials. But that won't be an issue here because it's only the filament that's going in the machine and coming out dry, ready to print as it's feeding into your printer. The first thing we need to do is download the manual. So there is a USB stick here, but I don't happen to have a laptop with me. So on my phone, I downloaded the newest version of the manual off the website. The first thing the manual tells you to do is make sure that you have removed this screw here. So this screw is only for shipping purposes. Um, it's holding, I think it said the pump in place. So we just remove that and set it aside. On the front of the machine, it's not a whole lot to see. We have a power button, we have a USB-C port, and we have the touch screen, um, and of course the logo. On the back, so the business end here, we have the inlet and the outlet, and then we have these two kind of quick connectors. Um, so these are the types of connectors that you would see on a water filtration setup um, with O-rings similar to these. But these are desiccants. Um, and so this is going to keep uh, everything nice and dry in this sealed environment in here. So it goes like that and it should just press in and click and be locked in. And if you needed to remove it, you would press in these little metal tabs and it actually just kind of pops itself right out. So make sure that's secure like that. And we do have a second one um, when that one is spent. Um, and it looks like they are also uh, unthreadable so they could be uh, refilled. So before I start trying to assemble anything else, let's just kind of go through the parts that we have. Of course, we've got a power cable. We have this piece here, which looks like it attaches via hinge. It has a couple um, spring-loaded pins, a small tube that goes all the way through, uh, through a larger diameter, what looks like a Capricorn tube almost. And so I believe this goes on here or here. This one already has a, a hinge on it. This one has a hinge here. Let's open this and just take a look. This is also threaded here for an insert. But this has two rows of pins. This one only has one row of pins. So based on that, this is meant to go here in place of this little cover. We have another uh, 3D printed part. And these are 3D printed, not FDM. These look like they're um, SLS, um, like laser sintered, because they have that sandblasted kind of texture to them. Um, so these are likely nylon. Um, so we have another part here. It has some electronics in the end here, and it has one row of pins, uh, five pins. And so one, two, three, four, five, those pins line up with those. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this goes here. But again, we're gonna check the manual. So then that would mean that my 
my guess that this goes here is probably correct. So we have a bag of really small O-rings they look like um, and one kind of uh, cap, um, like a little nipple cap. And then another little 3D printed guy with a smooth rod on one end and just like a little wave icon. So their logo that is. We have another thumb screw with a long thread and a smooth rod. So the smooth rod here would be for the hinge, for sure. We've already got one inserted in there. Um, and the, uh, the threaded um, rod is similar to this um, with a little thumb screw. And then we have two um, inlets with PTFE in them. Um, and these would screw in. So I'm gonna guess that they thread in there like that. So we have the USB drive here. This is a USB-C USB drive um, on one end, but then you can flip it around and you have your standard USB-A. Um, and even further than that, you can flip this down and you can have what looks like lightning. Um, so it has basically every combination of connectors you could need, depending on your machine. Uh, on the front of the machine here, we have USB-C, so we could use that side. And then we have a USB 3 um, A to C cable. They also sent you color matched, almost, um, kind of latex gloves uh, with a lot of grip on them. I'm not sure why I'd need these, um, but they include them anyway. Again, let's read the manual. Okay, after looking at the manual, um, there's a few things. These O-rings here, it says never operate the machine without the O-rings, otherwise it won't satisfactorily uh, dry the material. And where they're referring to is inside here, it shows that this comes out and there's an O-ring in there. Since this was pre-installed, there's already an O-ring. Um, and likewise in here. Um, so we don't have to worry about, about either of those situations. This piece definitely does go here, as I guessed. Um, so this is the outlet. Uh, this piece is also labeled out right here. Um, so we will have to install that smooth rod there for a hinge. So let's handle that. So we got the hinge and the thumb screw. And then we may as well take one of these and screw it into there. There's already Teflon tape on it. So this is our outlet and then our inlet, it's gonna go in here. So this is an add-on for it. Uh, it did mention that if you're gonna use any glass fiber or carbon fiber filled nylons, for example, that you need the preheater unit. Um, so this kind of begins heating the filament before it even goes into the unit to give it a little bit extra. It's got those two rows of pins there. So those line up with these. And so we need to remove the hinge from here, which we can just use the thumb screw and kind of push it out the other side. There we go. And then pull this off. And then this should just go here slide right over top. I just want to make sure that the the uh, PTFE tube here goes like right into the center of that side. There we go. Bottom that out. Throw the hinge back in. And then reinstall the thumb screw. The other thing I should point out is the desiccant cartridge here is intended to go in this orientation, so the thread should be at the top. Um, ours is in that orientation, um, not this way, for example. And so then we'll set aside this uh, cover for the inlet here. We'll put it uh, somewhere safe so that we can always revert back if we need. And in this case, we don't have a threaded insert to screw in here. We would on the standard inlet cover, this would actually belong like that. Uh, but here, because it goes straight all the way in, we just have this. So I'm gonna keep um, these uh, O-rings and that plug in here. I'm gonna throw this little stopper in here as well, this guy. Just keep those safe. And we're done as far as setup goes. So now on the machine, on the screen, there are profiles for a variety of different materials. The manual does caution us 
that we should not use any material in here that does not have a profile on the screen to be selected. Um, so based on the type of material you're running, it's gonna have different temperature settings and whatnot. Um, we just need to make sure that whatever we're putting in there is compatible with the machine. All right, now we're ready to turn it on and get loading our filament. All right, so your dry wise is ready. We're gonna start drying and let's follow these prompts very carefully. Make sure that there's no filament in there. There isn't and the desiccant is definitely in place correctly. We just went over that. Okay, so we have nylon and our nylon doesn't match any of these. This is uh, Matter 3D PA or Nylon 66, 66. It's an old spool from like a year ago. Um, or maybe we'll just choose kind of a standard nylon. Um, inserting a different filament will result in damage. That's fine. You know, you wouldn't want to put in PLA and tell it it's a nylon. So cut the filament to a point. I've already done that. Locate the entry point. So we're gonna push the filament in the top. So we're gonna push the filament in the top and it says that the light should go solid here. So as the instructions say, you keep feeding filament in the top until it's just about to come out the bottom and the bottom will go solid green and also on the front, it'll show solid green. So we're good here, we can go confirm. Press start to begin drying your filament. If it's not started within 20 minutes, the device is gonna shut off for safety reasons and do not move the filament while drying, okay? So we can hit start. It says it's gonna take 55 minutes. Um, I don't believe it's going to take quite that long. Um, but this is drying the initial kind of coil that's inside the machine. And then once that's dry and ready to go, you can start printing and it will dry as it feeds through slowly during your print. So we'll come back in a little bit. I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, so it's beeping and it says the drying cycle is complete. Select an option. So we're gonna load the printer now. Are you sure we wanna load the printer? Yes. So we're gonna pull some filament out of the dryer until this light stays solid green. There we go, so I think it's about 24 inches or so. Um, so we'll hit confirm. And we can prepare our filament like we normally would. We cut the first five centimeters on a 45 degree angle, load it into our printer. And when we're done, we can say printer loaded. And then it's going to prepare for about 15 minutes. And then we're ready to start printing. So if you've ever printed with nylon that you thought was dry and found it was wet, you get those little tiny bubbles, you get pretty poor layer adhesion, all kinds of other problems. Well, after drying it, we don't have any of those problems with this. This thing turned out absolutely beautifully, a little four in one manifold here. Um, you know, considering this filament has literally been sitting on a shelf since last summer, and here we are in April, uh, it was clearly pretty wet, and this turned out mint. Um, so while it does take a few minutes, you know, up front to get this thing primed and ready to start feeding into your printer, it beats the alternative of having to wait 8, 10, 12, or even more hours for your spool to kind of entirely dry before you can start printing with it. And then once you've dried it and you're printing with it, it's now exposed to the air, unless you've got a dry box that's like feeding. Um, but you know, there's the potential to absorb, absorb moisture um, after all of that drying time. This way it's being dried in flight and is coming out dry going right into your print. Um, I personally would prefer this option. Um, this might be a little more difficult if you have a fleet of machines, getting an army of these guys versus having a large kind of dehydrating setup. Um, but it's a really nice, unique alternative to what we've been using all this time. Hopefully you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.